Now, we're going to fill in the rest of the, the dark colour. So we're going to fill in the shading on the bandana and up in the hair. So I'm going to use a 2B pencil at first. And I have noticed just above the ear here, we've got a little... little bit of hair at the back. So again, I'm using the flat of the 2B pencil. We'll probably end up using a 4B and an 8B on this. But I'm now just going to quickly fill in all around the white shapes. So the white will be kind of reversed out. Of the bandana. Now you can kind of start anywhere. Uh, I'm left handed so I'm going to work this way across. I've shown that on other videos where you can literally just start anywhere. But this is just purely because I'm left handed and I tend to work across the page this way. So I'm going to do this quickly, but I'm pressing on, you can tell it's a little bit darker down here. So we've got the dark shadow underneath, just some bitty shapes and that kind of little bit of hair there. And I'm just going to try and fill in as much, so I'm just going to crisp up the line following the curve of the bandana and so we're filling in as much of the black of the bandana but it obviously it gets lighter so it's darker here then goes light and then goes dark down this side and because of the the patterning on the actual bandana. If you do this quickly, but fairly accurately in your tone as you put it down, you'll do it in one go and it'll look okay. And so I'm just keep checking because there's so many kind of wiggly lines so here in between this one we've got a number of dots so I'm just putting the dots in just filling that part in then coming up the side where we've got this kind of wiggly bit and again using the side of the pencil you can just tilt it slightly and you can actually fill in different widths and gaps of Uh, the bandana. So here I'm using a lot of the side of the pencil. To fill in that area there. But I use the kind of just lift it up and use the tip when I need to be careful. So here just because of the construction line that's underneath just pulled out the construction line with the putty rubber of the white line that comes across. Again that shape that's there just pulling that out a little bit and now we just filling in the shape and it's getting a little bit lighter 
Now we can obviously come in and darken the town up. And even in your drawing, you could actually put this, you could do this flat if you wanted. Uh, just so as it's very graphic. And that would be quite a, an interesting style contrast. With doing the face realistically. And this is the joy of art. Art is incredibly subjective. And you can just have fun drawing how you like and when you experiment with things you can actually find that you hit upon a style that other people actually like so here we've got this curve we just need to extend that line up a bit just to make that work and the other thing is as well, even though, I mean, I've, I've done this very quickly to actually get the shape and the detail of all the patterning on the bandana down. I did this relatively quickly, but because of that, it'll just work when the full, when the face is done. You'll look at it and you'll go, oh, that's a bandana with a pattern on it. Your brain will put the two together because you can be a little bit looser and a little bit more impressionistic. You know, I've just gone over the white line, so I'm just pulling the pencil off. Then around these dots, just being careful. Then coming down the side, can finish filling this shape in. All the black around these white shapes, coming inside here around these little white dots. Inside that little leaf part. And then around these little white shapes. Going up. And then. Down here. Just fill in. That little bit. And there already you can see we've got the bandana starting to be filled in and looking as part of the hole on the drawing. So now we've got this really nice area. I'm using being careful around the leaf shapes. But just using the flat side of the pencil careful by the white line and you can kind of see the tone of the fabric it's kind of it's not flat and uniform you know it's not a perfect color and that's the the fabric being worn and you know like wear and tear on the fabric when it's washed and rubbed against your hand and your head so this nice kind of tone that we're putting on as we're coming across it works with the actual texture of the fabric so i'm not trying to get an absolutely perfect grade so you can See there, there's like, it, it's not a consistent tone. Again, working with the shapes and the pattern of the, 
actual bandana. That creates the illusion of the actual fabric. So you can just keep going back over little bits and add a little bit darker or, you know, just circular squiggles and and that gives you that actual texture of the fabric. When you think all the different marks that you can make with a pencil, it is absolutely wonderful and phenomenal that you can do so much creativity with one instrument. You know, at the moment, all we've used is the 2B pencil. So here, as we come off here, it's going to get darker as we come over. Now we need to match around the little leaf shapes. So I'm just filling this in using the point carefully. Center of the leaf shapes around the outsides. There's the center little dark triangle above filling in that shape and again because we as I mentioned earlier because we spent the time putting the actual correct construction lines down that's your foundation that then allows you to be very quick on this part to actually fill it in. And it is genuinely enjoyable. You are literally colouring in. Just filling in shapes which is why I use the how to draw anything shapes technique and check out the link in the cards to how to draw anything part one. All these are, all they are completely is just shapes. Let's finish off inside the dark on this pattern around these little dots. You see how the pencil sitting inside the palm of my hand, I'm pressing it against the palm of my hand. You know, it's not that this is a recognized technique. The pencil's just getting shorter, so it won't fit on the top. And it just, you will hold a pencil differently and you'll develop techniques over time. And you just don't think about it. I wasn't actually thinking, oh, that pencil is pressed against the palm of my hand. It just happens naturally because I'm thinking about doing the drawing, not thinking about, oh, this technique must work, this one must work, I must do this. I'm just bothered because I've done the hard work of laying the outline down. It's now just almost a, a kind of therapeutic process of just filling in all of the dark on this bandana. Now as we come down on the side, this obviously gets much darker, like we've got the dark on this side here. I'm going to crease up, I'm going to sharpen my pencil because it was getting close to the wood and so the wood would then start scratching the paper if it got too low. <coughs> So now coming down this side, right to the edge, we want to fill this in now, darker than this central part. Again, I've just got to be, I'm being quick, but careful. At the top of the bandana. Now it would be easier
easier to use, say, a 4B pencil for this bit. But using the 2B and really pressing on, I'm keeping consistency with everything that I've done across the bandana. And that way the bandana will be kind of uniform in its own textures and techniques. And then when I get to the hair, I will use a 4B pencil because it's softer. B is for black. So you get darker blacks easier the higher the number. So this is a 2B, a 4B, 8B. You can get 3, 5, 7. And some pencil companies actually do a 9B black. I've said before, that's the kind of spinal tap of the pencil world. You know, spinal tap, that kind of cult movie of a, a rock group. And his amplifier went up to 11, didn't go up to 10. Because it was louder than everything else. And you just think, why has somebody come up with a 9B pencil? But the 4B and all of those, I mean, that, that already, that's looking really, really lovely. And so, got to be careful around these dots and swirly lines. Just filling this in. Again, I'm, you can see how the pencil's resting on the top because of I want the dark. The sharper point allows me to press on with more detail and focus and get the dark pretty much instantly that I'm after. Just using this 2B pencil. So now bring that dark line right the way down and we want the dark coming up around these little squiggly lines just fill in carefully now you can, if you want, you could use a pastel pencil or you know, something to put the white on. Uh, you, know, you can get white paint, ink pens, all kinds of stuff. I mean, I've used, uh, it was on a Vici on his hair. I used gouache or acrylic to paint some of the highlights on his hair. So if you wanted to be absolutely massively accurate, you could come in with something to actually lighten up. So again, some of my construction lines are just covering that little white squiggle. And that way, it's like these dots here, they... They've kind of disappeared, but it's okay because I'm just doing a nice quick sketch and I'm indicating. But if you wanted them there, you could use paint or something to then add more dots on. But I'm just drawing around these shapes to give an impression. of the pattern of KSI's bandana. So again, we're filling this up now, right up to this corner, and inside this one, to the edge, we've got a couple of dots as well, so we don't fill all of that in. And 
then underneath the bottom got this little inverted V now then we've got inside these two white lines Now, just coming across here, we can really darken this down, but I want a soft edge of tone where the bandana meets the head. So I'm just softening that off slightly, increasing the dark on that side, just the sh where the shadow fold liners and again we've got the same under the center so I'm just using the tip very carefully just to increase the dark at the bottom of the bandana right? so this is like where it's folded over on itself and then using the side just being very soft right next to the line and we can just crisp up the edges of those lines a little bit now we've obviously there you can see it's darker there as it curves around and over obviously the white down here is not pure white so I'm just going over with the pencil very very quickly and just filling that tone in slightly although it still looks white but obviously you've got the curve and the shadow as it comes around again the same underneath here just increase that a little bit and the same on the edge now you can with the tip of the pencil if we come back in and then really darken up quickly underneath the lines just went over a little bit so I'm just pulling the pencil off a little bit you can just see it just gives that extra dimension of definition to the pattern Need to make that line a little bit thicker inside and the same on this top one I'm just going to sharpen the pencil just so as I've got a nice sharp point You can see I'm just really quickly now darkening the lines around these patterns. I'm not filling everything in, I'm just literally indicating a very quick crisp line. And it just gives us a little bit more definition on the drawing again this is just this is an illusion this is kind of an illusion technique and the dark the very dark line will make 
the exposed paper seem that little bit brighter. And I'm literally just quickly following the tracks and the shapes that I put down at first. And this will work in conjunction with the tone that we've just filled in very quickly to make the pattern look more defined. Now if you take your time you can obviously go around absolutely everything that's on the drawing. But I'm just going kind of quickly And there you can see that's really got a lot more definition now. Same on this side. Just really pressing on, sharpening up the big lines. around the shapes and we want this central leaf underneath at the bottom just thicken up that center line and the one at the top of his head and that's all the bandana in looking quite good and again we can add more on as we build up the picture if we need to but we'll see how it all fits together now we're in with a 4b pencil and we're going to do the dreads. Now again, we've put all of these shapes in, but I'm going to use the 4B pencil. We're using the side of the pencil and I'm pressing on fairly lightly. And I'm just going to indicate quickly where The darker shadowy parts are. So here we've got this like kind of love heart shadow underneath. And I'm using the edge of the pencil and you can just fuzz it, just literally just wiggle your pencil around getting nice soft shapes unless you snap the tip off like I'd adjust pressing it up it was just too I angled it too much so here right down by the bottom we've got a little dark shape and area as we come up you can see we've got this darker patch here And I'm balancing my forearm on the top of my right hand and I'm pivoting from my shoulder just allowing the arm the freedom so it's now pivoting on my forearm but I'm kind of working from all of the arm rather than working from my wrist and so you can increase the pressure that you want to put on but you're just doing it in a free way. Oops. Just went right over the line. So let's just hey up the masking tape. I'm gonna to have to replace the masking tape, it's just giving up. It is, it is. How strange. So again, right in the I've got to have my window open it's it's hot it's the summer and I don't know exactly how much ambient noise you can hear whether you can hear the birds but I can in the distance hear somebody with some kind of grinder or sandy giving it everything 
because people in this lockdown period are all at home doing lots of DIY and all kinds of stuff. Ordinarily, I was the only person WFH working from home. Me and the wife here, everyone else had to go out to work and that's all changed. So <sighs> there we go, the joys of. So there we have a triangle of highlight. And we just, again, just filling in, looking, indicating where the shadows are. And already you can see, because of the form of dreadlocks, you're doing it differently than somebody with straight hair you're actually creating the form and the shape. And so this is actually quite a nice thing to be able to do rather than drawing the lines from a parting and, you know, the highlights and, but you've still got to think, how do I make this look like hair? And this is the whole part of making marks with a pencil. And I do love being able to teach you guys this. It's it's just such a such a pleasure to be able to encourage you all with your drawing. And people keep asking me, oh, you know, how do you do hair? It's like every single portrait lesson that I've done, I'm pretty sure everyone's had hair. So it's like, well, watch the portrait lessons. Will you do a tutorial just on hair? No, everybody who's got hair, there's a tutorial that it's on hair. Go and watch, go and look. And even though this isn't someone who's got straight hair, it's still, you've got to make it look like real hair. So here we've got this kind of owl-shaped dark area. I'm going to bring the dark right the way down the edge of the bandana. I'm really pressing on using the flat of the pencil. But we've got a large dark area here. And then we've got this kind of diamond shape. lighter patch inside. A little bit of dark inside it. I'm just going to put all the full darker mass down first. We got that little frond sticking up and we got this little gap in his hair there. You can see already that you're creating this mass and the shape. Dark above that. To work, actually you're creating this mass and shape to work the full portrait. And these darks will then help us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Bit of spent rubber stuck on his eyes. So when we come down and start building up the tones on his face after we've finished this section, we've then pretty much got the whole portrait in. So again, just quickly indicating all of this dark shape and just like we did with the 2B pencil I'm doing the same in the hair but I'm just kind of spiraling and circling and that gives us 
the shapes on each of the individual kind of dreads you know you're getting that slightly bobbly tone and that then goes up and you want that softer edge but by circling you know go over the if you've done any straighter lines go over and circle and you'll have darker patches inside but it'll soften it out and you can see there we've got now a really lovely mass of hair above KSI's head now as we come back over I'm now just circling to fill in this lighter tone area you know, I'm not I'm not doing like direct lines I'm circling and that gives us the kind of organic shape that we actually want so where we put that darker tone in I'm now just circling over And it gives us that lovely, nice, soft edge and rounded shapes that we actually need. So now we've got a, a good dark and a good mid-tone down. It's now just a question of building up your tone to create all of the shapes and the shadows now there are some pointed highlights so in fact I'm going to use the clean putty rubber I'm going to pull it into a point for the top part and I'm just stippling And just keep pulling it to a sharper point and this is just giving just pulling off a little bit of the pencil just keep looking where you need to and that'll help with these little dappled highlights now again just like I said with the bandana if you want to you could come in with a pastel pencil or some paint and actually indicate these little highlights but you can see already that that's giving us that little kind of flavor of the highlights so now coming in with the spent older putty rubber and you'll find you'll, you'll actually see how I mean eventually this will have to go in the bin because it just won't pick up any more pencil but it's just a brilliant tool and it's allowing me to pull off more and more And it's actually it's actually getting more off than the the clean putty rubber just how it works but you get these lovely I mean in a sense there's like little marks that it's like bokeh on a, a camera the out of focus effect on a camera And you can see already now that that's looking like organic hair that's absolutely lovely just by using the flat side of that 4b pencil and then coming back in with this putty rubber again i'm going i'm doing this really quick i know 
you know, this is going to be hours long drawing lesson. But I'm doing the lot from start to finish in one go to give you all the techniques so you can just watch and learn and develop your drawing skills. But again, if you want to do this, you, you would need to spend eight hours to get that absolutely photographic if you want. But I'm just trying to get a good sketch. Just sharpening the 4B pencil again. We're going to come back in now. And I'm going to start at the top in the center. And I'm just quickly, I'm just circling, just building up all of this dark now. And I'm using the kind of, I mean, I the, the, the front bit kind of snap off. But I'm tilting it so as rather than having the long flat, I'm flattening the very point so that I've got, you know, it's maybe two or three mil across. And then as a circle, it's actually filling in softly because it's a 4B pencil. A lot of this dark area. So there we've got a nice darker patch and then it just comes out. So you just don't press on as hard. But just keep circling and you've got that organic shape. Rather than straight cross hatching. Coming up to the end of that frond. And then that one. We got this darker mass here. Again, I'm just circling. And you can see there now we've got that really nice darker area with deep dark shadows where you want them. So we've got to increase that on that left hand side. And we come down here, We've got a darker shadow coming down the side. But just by using the pencil the way that we are, you are creating the illusion of dreadlocks. just in a sketch. Again, we've got the dark now coming down on the edge of this one, just softening that edge off a bit. Again, just swirling. And then this curves out to the end. Increase the dark. And there now, that's starting to show us the highlighted area on the bandana. Because you worked and got the tone in first. It's working with the bandana to give us the form and shape that we actually want. Darkening up those bits as we come across the top of the head. Now, just as we did on the graphics on the bandana, just doing that now, increasing the darkness of the line at the top where it goes into the dreadlocks. So I've made a sharp line and now I'm just feathering the edge into the dreadlocks. 
and that now has given us that perfectly crisp line for that bandana. So again, just working down the right hand side of his head now, got a slightly lighter section there, but with a dark little bit at the top. And then as we come down the side of his head, darkened up some you know, squiggles inside that diamond of uh, highlight, but then you can really darken down the shadows. So inside all of the shadow now, just really increasing the dark. Crisping up next to the bandana. And then inside this mass of these dreadlocks on the edge. So there you can see we've got the light coming across and getting darker as we go over. So now just using the flat of the 4B pencil, just adding a little extra tone, but very carefully. And again, I'm going in straight lines now so that it's different to doing the circles in the hair. We just bring it, and you've got this kind of diagonal line of dark kind of coming over a little bit. It's just the shadow that's cast by the shape of his head as it curves around and the bandana curves around his forehead. So we can just increase that. Again, I'm just gently filling it in. But like I did with the 2B pencil, I'm letting the pencil create that kind of distressed, washed, texture on his bandana. It's working with the 2B pencil underneath. So again we've got all of these larger shapes now. I'm just quickly filling that in. And there you can see how we've actually made that darker tone now match the side of his head where his hair is. Again, softening up underneath. Some of the darker lines. And then again, just keep looking and it's up to you. You literally just decide to go, yep, I've done enough. That'll do. That's fine. I won't do any more. Again, I'm going to come in now with this kitchen roll. I'm using a bit that's got some paper on already. And you can just soften off some of the areas. And that in and of itself, you're actually pulling some of the pencil off it because this is abrasive. It's working a bit like the putty rubber. But that's looking rather lovely. 
Again, back in with a 4B pencil. Very gently. Increasing the dark with a soft edge where the bandana comes and connects with his forehead. And then just coming in with the putty rubber. To clean up a couple of those lines where we've just gone over. And just taking out the patterning a little bit. But just by pulling that off, I'm just going to put the paper down now so that I don't keep on smudging. Again, I'm back in with the 4B pencil. Because down this bit over his ear, we've got the darkest part. Like over here, the shadow, this is where it's at its most intense. Just right underneath. And so now we've got to work down the face and start detailing up and darkening the shadows. So we've got to work on the eyes, the nose, the mouth, build the ears up and then build the tones up on his flesh and then put his beard in. But anyway, that hair and that bandana is looking quite lovely. Now we're going to come in with the 2B pencil and we're going to start detailing up KSI's eyes. <clears throat> We're going to start on the left eye. We need to increase that black line above his eye, where his eyelashes are. Again, you can just fuzz it out that little bit. And I'm doing the lines here <clears throat> on the edge, coming out. purely in the kind of direction that the eyelashes will go. So we've got little points that are sticking up above it. Again, I've started using a new pencil. I've still got the smaller one. Uh, and I will use that in a second. Now the lower eyelid can bring a darker line into the corner where his tear duct is. Increase a little bit of tone right in that corner and then we've got to bring down <clears throat> the very edge of his eye and then the you can see like the kind of skin and, and inside of his eyelid just in that corner but then we need to come out with that shadow just past it it's going to go up there And then we want much darker tone in the centre. So for that, I'm going to use the 4B. So where his pupil is, that's very dark. Going up to that highlight right at the top. shadow created 
by the upper eyelid and then underneath coming down to the edge I'm just increasing the dark underneath the kind of eyelashes then the edge of his iris is lovely and rich and dark all the way around I'm coming back in with the 2B pencil and darkening the iris down what you've got here you've got that reflected highlight of the reflection of his monitor so we're leaving the one above that's the actual brightest highlight from the light but then you've got these two slightly lighter patches which are the reflected monitors and then you can just gently darken down that iris right to the bottom and there straight away we have KSI's left eye peering out at us again this is the 2B pencil and I'm just darkening down the top part of the white of his eyeball on the left hand side just gently easing the tone I'm going to use the clean putty rubber pinch it to a point and I've just pulled cleaned up the white highlight dot I'm doing it the same just cleaning up the one on the right eye before we come in and do the same on this side so now just gently darkening the upper eyelid the rim of it where his eyelashes will be again just doing the same thing just wiggling it up and down just to indicate the kind of shape that the eyelashes will produce And that gives us the kind of wider softer edge that we want of the eye going over now I'm going to do the same I've gone to the 4B pencil and I'm indicating all of the pupil coming up around that highlight darkening the edge coming down to the iris it needs to be dark right at the top underneath and we've got that little secondary highlight on that side just twisting the pencil keeping the point sharp then we can really bring that down I'm going back to the 2B pencil indicating the screen like we did on this side just filling that in with a little bit of tone and then filling the iris in much darker and there we've got two eyes starting to look out at us now bringing the tone on his eye in fact before I do that 
have got a horizontal line right in the center of his eyeball just off one of the grid lines and because it's highlighted there anyway I've, it's just okay to basically remove that just indicating the tear duct in the corner and the shadow caused by the upper eyelid as we come across to the right hand side filling that tone in and then we've got a kind of flesh colour on the side of his eye before it goes into the dark mass right in the corner and we've got dark line of the lower eyelid coming round into that corner I'm just indicating like I did there with that corner just a little bit of tone now we can see we've got both of KSI's eyes in and looking out at us so now just indicating some of this shadow down the right hand side of KSI's nose coming over the top and you've got that corner of his eye socket coming right the way over to the right hand side of his eye and you can just see already that that's giving us a nice three-dimensional shape around the eye to work with as we build up and we'll come back and build up some more of that tone presently whereas now we're going to do the nostrils so I'm using the side of the pencil this is still the 2B we've got that dark soft shadow right underneath at the bottom that curves up into his right nostril and we want the shadow we've got the C shape here we've got shadow coming down in this highlighted part needs to be left you've got a kind of slightly lighter part but we can just build that slightly darker tone up and then you've got the shape of the shadow of the nose and the nostril coming out just to the side so here up at the top part we want to increase that where it comes down and you've got the crease the smile crease of the cheek just gently and quickly building that tone up again the bit underneath the nose right above the nostril it's like there's a kind of vertical line there and then you get this shape of highlight the C shape of the highlight underneath and then this tone comes across to this side a bit darker underneath getting the edge comes around and up And then you've got the highlight coming off but you've got a little bit of tone 
coming out, which is the kind of crease line. And we've got the highlight here on his nose. And you just build the tone up around it. Just making that a little bit darker. And you just add a little tone at a time. Just to build it up. You can see here from the edge of the nostril. And we want that shape to come about purely by the three dimensional shape of the nose to come about purely by adding more tone. And this dark offsets the light on this side and makes the nose and the eye more three dimensional. And this is how I said you can, you can just work around at any part, but you've just got to keep looking at the tones. So here we've got where this comes down diagonally, the top of his nose. It's a little bit darker. And then that comes across his cheek a little bit. And there you can see it's really giving three dimensional shape and form to KSI's nose. And then here you've got like right up the centre of the nose a little bit darker so just increasing that tone all the way up then we've got that little bar between the two eyebrows and then again you've got this diagonal shade here And by not twisting the pencil using the flat, you get this nice softer tone and it just keeps adding and building up the three dimensionality that we're after. You see how that comes up, that diagonal there between those two eyes and then curves across the top of the nose. So just increase a little bit of tone. That's looking fantastic. Again, underneath the nose. Now got this tone that comes down the side of his mouth. And then you've got a darker shadow side here that's going to go even darker. We do have a highlight up there, but we can pull that off using the putty rubber. Bit of shadow on the corner of the nostril there. Shade in between. And then coming down this side, so leave a little highlight on that centre part of his mouth. Between the top of his mouth and the bottom of his nose. Then we can just bring this tone down. You see how it just gets a little bit lighter towards the crease line there. So now I'm bringing that tone down. Tone coming down from his eye across his cheek. Just indicating where the dark line is, where the transition is. Again, this is all just with the 2B pencil. Just building up little layers of tone. A 
little bit at a time. Now curving over the eye. Then up the side of his forehead. Again, I'm just looking and following the pencil. I'm not planning and doing it in a, I must now do this section or this section. Just curve that right the way over the top. And you can see you've got this nice highlight here in between his two eyebrows. So now we've just got this dark tone coming off the left eye. Then the eyelid, you've got this purple tinge. Probably a bruise from his boxing, I am guessing. But in a black and white portrait, in a pencil portrait, it kind of doesn't show up. So I wonder if that was, this is from, uh, after one of his boxing dues. Now, right in the corner, got this diagonal that's coming out and over. By the tear duct, you've got a little bit of dark there that curves up and around. Coming off the edge of his eye. And going down the side of his cheek. Again, we just want a softer transition, so I'm just adding a little bit, blending that transition over, just using the pencil. Coming down, right down the cheek. We've got that lovely slightly darker shade as the face curves around the side and the highlight is here on the front. Now I can just build that up a little bit. Got that line coming over from the corner. And there, that's really starting to look fully three-dimensional. So now quickly, I'm just going to build up a fair bit of this tonal shape and the values all around the face. Got this bit underneath his chin. You can see how shadow comes around and we've got this little highlight that we're leaving and you got this slightly darker point area kind of halfway down his chin and then we've got obviously the beard's going to be about here so I'm just indicating a line where the bits of his beard are going to appear. And already you can see that just helps to give us a little focus that we'll come back to. And we've got the shade coming up the side of his face. Now it's going to get darker up here but we've got this reflected highlight off the t-shirt that we need to just leave. Now you could use artistic license, but I'm teaching you to look and to see. So just need a little bit of tone down there. You know, if you're doing this as a setting and you wanted someone, a, you know, a proper portrait, then you'd say, wear a darker shirt, put a black t-shirt on or a dark blue or a gray. And the reflected highlights wouldn't be as bright as that one there. 
So now we're coming down, we're filling in the shadow, just making it darker, coming down under the neck, under the chin, where the Adam's apple is. Coming down the right hand side of his neck. Again, all this is just with a 2B pencil. Just being careful, building up the layers. Now down the right hand side of his neck. Then we need this curve coming down following this trajectory down to the top of where his collarbone is. And then turn to the right of the necklace on his left shoulder. Just build that up. And I'm just looking and adding carefully and simply. And you just want to build up the values and the tone very, very carefully. So now here on this side, it's much darker. So I'm just bringing a darker tone, being careful to not cross the line of the necklace. Again, we'll pull out using the dark putty rubber, the highlight on that in a bit. That tone comes all the way down. And then we need to increase this on his right cheek and it's going to go a lot darker. But I'm just adding some tone to it now just to give me the direction that we're going with the amount of tone that we need. Again, same on the ears, just darkening that this side down a lot. And then quickly on that side, just following the shape of the ears. And there you can see we've just put such a nice amount of tone down that it's really helping us to see the face looking out at us. And when we add more detail to the nose and the mouth next and then the ears, you'll see it build up and the eyebrows. You'll see the face really start to lift off. Now we're coming in with a 4B pencil. And we're going to darken. KSI's nostrils. Again, we've got the shapes that are in, but I'm using it very carefully and just softening the edge. It's dark right underneath the, the top part where that curves around. And then his left nostril, see how that curves up and it's darker towards the centre of the nose and then just soften it out as you come down and where it curves over it's not as dark. So just think about 
not just putting big dark areas underneath you got the bottom of the nose got this dark right under where the crease of his skin of his left nostril touches the side again same on that side just darkening it down that little bit shadow on the right nostril and then the curve underneath the right nostril you can darken that and bring that slightly darker shadow out to the side and then where the top of the nostril joins the side of the cheek in the top of that eye just bringing a little bit of tone over the top but there already just by putting that little bit in on the nose it's really made it lift off so I'm coming back in with a 2B pencil because it's a bit harder than the I'm using the smaller one in fact I'm going to use this for the last time because I can't sharpen this anymore and then that one can go in this pencil extender so I'm using the, the side of the tip you've got the edge of his mouth coming over into the tone onto the side of his cheek we've got the center of his mouth that's the defining line but it's not as dark as the nose be very careful not to over darken when you don't need to and in a lot of senses just like Ariana Grande because of the smoothness of KSI's face this is an exercise in tone control so we've got this dark little dark bit down on the right hand side of his mouth where it's in the shadow then we've got these lines going up his lips and you've got this tone coming down gradually getting a little bit darker towards the right hand side but there's a highlight you can see coming down over the top and that'll be accentuated if you just slightly darken the skin tone above the top of the lip where that then goes up to his right nostril and that tone goes out now again because I haven't set a time limit I'm just going to do the drawing until it's complete again we've got much darker shadow inside And I just hope you're having fun watching and learning and, and trying these things. But to do a portrait in a few hours like this is a great, just great fun. It's just fantastic. I hope you, I'm, I'm having an absolute blast. And also you can pick up uh, art and put it down. So to give you an idea, uh, you know, when this is finished it's going to be somewhere between four and five hours long but I've had to do this over two days just building some more tone up there as that comes down over to the top of the lip and the reason I've had to do this uh, and there's a number of technical considerations as well the equipment that I use uh, the cameras will record half an hour at a time some cameras will only record 12 to 15 minutes at a time 
So I have to do each section in 30 minute kind of chunks. But also, I've still got family life stuff to do. Sorting things out, going shopping. Yeah, with all of the lockdown stuff that's been going on. That's caused a load of problems. Now again, you can see the lips really starting to lift off the page now. And also having to go to the tip, queuing up at the tip and all that. So I started this drawing the day before, managed to do a couple of sections and then life took over. So I had to deal with the things that needed dealing with queuing up wherever I needed to go and queue up and all of that stuff. And then just come back and do this. So, you know, I love all the comments that people keep putting in the videos. I love the comments. Again, I'm just doing the same thing. We, we following the lines of the lips. And you can see that down in this corner, this is a little bit darker where the lips come together. And then underneath, we've got the shade coming down. So we've got this tone now coming all the way across the bottom of the lip. Right the way to the side, I'm just going to darken this down. And then you, you put the lines in and the direction that the lips are curved. But as I was saying, you know, I love all the comments that people put and it's like, oh, what am I doing next? What am I doing next? And I'm doing as much as I can. But I will post stuff as and when it's completed to the, the best of my ability. And, and I love teaching you. It's such a joy to teach people these drawing techniques. So again, we got darker tone on the right hand side of his lip. So right in the center, we, you can see we've got this darker shadow now. And then this is coming down and it gets darker towards this corner. And that tone above is darker still. And when we put the little bits of his mustache in, that'll really bring out this lip on this side. So, and as you can see, there is a, a highlight reflected here. So I'm just pulling that off quickly, right in the corner and carefully, but I'm using the old dirty putty rubber. And now we've got that nice little shape in that corner of his mouth. Now, you kind of hear in this shadow, it's like a butterfly. You've got the darker shadow there, and then you've got the same there, coming off the side of his mouth. And then it curves underneath. That's such a lovely tone. I'm using the slight flatter point, but not the very tip. And I'm getting the nice crease lines in his lips. So we've got this kind of centered one that's coming down. Lighter going up. And then the same on this side, going all the way up to the top of his mouth. And then coming up just inside the top of his lip there, just darken that down a little bit. And then we've got the lines coming down to the center, darker line there as that curves up. Now you can see already that's really looking like a real fleshy pair of lips. 
And all you've got to do is just take your time, build up the layers of tone, keep looking at your subject and keep adding what you need to. So again, I'm now going to come in with the putty rubber. And pull it on the highlights. Pinching it right, I'm just knocking my pencils off. Uh, pinching it to a point so that I'm getting the lines, the fine lines that I require. Now I'm just gently dabbing underneath the center line of his mouth because you've got that reflected highlight underneath. Again, pulling it to a point and increasing the highlights on the left hand side of his mouth and you can see how they go up towards the corner and my paper's dropping off. Really, I need a little bit of tape just off the page that'll stop it from disappearing. Highlight on the corner. Then we've got this highlight coming right up. It softens the edge of his lip. And that's what a putty rubber is absolutely brilliant at. And a couple little highlights on the left hand side. Inside that centre part of his nose. Top part of his lips. And again, coming down. There you can see that's just given that top part of his lip on that side the highlight that we require. And this is as much a part of your drawing equipment as the actual pencils. That highlight underneath that nostril again, pulling out the main highlight on the end of his nose. Then we've got the edge of his nostril, just like we did on the lip. Just dabbing and in indicating those highlights nice and simply. Just up the centre of his nose. Those diagonals that come down. Again, on his eye. And you can see how that just makes it look so realistic. On the inside of this nostril. And it's the effect of the light and dark all working together. A little bit of reflected highlight underneath the nostril. Now, coming back in with the 2B pencil. Now you could use something like a 2H. Just darkening that. But learning pencil control is a very, very valuable lesson. And if you limit yourself sometimes to the amount of equipment you've got, it forces you to learn to be creative with a little. So now I'm very lightly drawing in the creases in the lips. With the sharp tip of the pencil. Much darker one coming down there. 
and kind of three little lines. And even though I'm just quickly indicating these lines, it gives you what you actually need in regards of reality on the actual lips. So here where we use the putty rubber for that highlight, I'm now just softly filling that shape in. Again, now the same on the lower lip. Very lightly putting the creases in the lip following the shape and form of the actual skin. And this is really lovely. I'm just, honestly, I'm having such a blast doing this. It is an absolute joy doing these lessons for you guys. And I know, again, I get some comments where some people, they, they're frustrated because they're not improving at their drawing. And all I can say is it takes years. Lots and lots of practice. And you'll look at this and go, oh, but you're so good. You've done this so well. And it's like, well, one, I've been drawing for over 40 years. But every single drawing is practice. You're learning, you're honing your skills, you are refining techniques. Again, shadow underneath there, just darkening that down a little bit. Now, I need the 4B pencil. There goes my pencil again. <sighs> you think with a hexagonal shape it wouldn't roll off your desk, wouldn't you? But there you go, never mind. So, right underneath the bottom lip, in this shadow, we've got a much darker shadow. But I'm using the tip, but not doing a solid line. I'm just using the tip very gently to fill it as softly as I can. And that dark comes under the centre. It doesn't go right the way up here. It stops about there. And then we can darken the shadow in there. need to fuzz this out a little bit underneath where that comes out to the side a little bit and using the tip inside where it's all fuzzy edged we can just really darken that down same in that corner not too dark on the le on the left hand side of his mouth So now, using the tip, we bring that shadow line on the top of the right hand side of his lip. Now I'm using the tip very carefully twisting it so I'm just keeping the point a little bit and I'm indicating the little bits of his moustache hair this is kind of pointillist where they are showing up and straight away you can see how that's giving us that definition on the right hand side of his mouth we can 
take that tone up a little bit. Curve the lip. That comes up underneath the nose. And then above the highlight down on this side, we do the same. And even though they're little, very little hairs, still draw them in the direction that they would grow. Just dot them as if they were coming out and growing down. You see there's a couple off the side of his mouth there. Again, slightly darker tone going up into the nostril. Finish that tone around. And there, that's looking really lovely. Again, this dark underneath. Just indicate some little bits underneath. That's absolutely lovely. Now I'm going to come back in with the 2B pencil and we're going to do the same now for KSI's eyebrows. Again, using the sharper tip and I'm drawing them and I'm looking and you can see here they're going up. So if you come up from the eye where his tear duct is You've got them, they kind of go up diagonally. You've got a couple, and then they kind of trace over. And you come right over to the edge. But you just draw them quickly in the direction that they grow. And that way, they look real. So this one's in the highlighted bit and it comes just underneath the bandana here. And if you come up, you can see we've got the early little construction lines. I'm just using the sharpen tip, keep twisting the pencil. And that's all of those eyebrows in but because it's in the highlighted area if you come in with your putty rubber put it to a point and just dab it in between you get that effect of that light got that highlight just above and then just below And there you've got that first eyebrow in. Just indicate some of those darker lines because we took some of the pencil off again. Now we need to do the same on this side. So we've got the verticals coming up. And they start to turn over. That's lighter. And then as it comes over, they get darker. And you don't do like a mass, you, you know, don't use the side of the pencil. I'm using the top of the pencil looking very carefully and just drawing a number of lines literally as if they were the eyebrow hairs and that then looks more real rather than pudding because this is such a large 
drawing, you don't, you're not just indicating a line. We're actually indicating all of his eyebrows. So here you can see we've got the shape coming over, going into the dark down here. And the tone will increase that for us. That is looking really good. So now we're going to do the ears. We've got that darker tone around the edge where it just curves up. It's darker inside. But we curve down, just soften. And again, I'm using the flat, soft part of the pencil. We've got this highlight on the top, but we just got a curve there, a little curved bit of tone. And then the middle part of his ear, got this nice shaded shape at the top. And then we've got this slightly darker tone for the entry to the ear canal. And then over the top of the entry to the ear canal, and we've got some reflected highlights just inside. Then we've got a bit of tone there that's creating that edge. And we'll pick out the highlights with the putty rubber in a minute. So that curves down. Now, again, I'm going to swap over to the 4B pencil because we've got this richer dark tone. I've got a little bit left in this one, but it's got a sharper point. And that's the shadow inside that crease. And we've got a kind of triangle right in the corner of shade bit darker but because the 4B is softer you can get a nice softer edge easier and right in that corner we've got that dark little bit and then we've got that curve coming down inside and then you've got the kind of edge of the earlobe And the soft bit coming down. So if I get the dirty putty rubber right on the top of the ear, got a highlight, the back edge, we can highlight that up inside there, tiny little highlight. Then on the inner ear, we've got that nice shape there, and a little dot going up into the corner, then just inside. And on the kind of earlobe that's underneath some of his hairs, in the inner ear, you've got highlighted bit. And then that comes down to the edge. And then you've got the top of his lower earlobe. And that's got a number of highlights. And straight away you can see we've got nice three-dimensional form on that ear. Now on this side, it's darker, it's in shadow. So I'm just pulling off very gently a little bit of the highlights. And then I'm coming in with the 4B pencil. I've got the shape and shadow. So here you've got this C shape. And it's dark right in at the top. And it just curves, but you've got a kind of reflected highlight inside and it's darker at the bottom. So you can just let that 
rich, darker tone hold. And the same as we've got on this side, we've got this kind of shoulder at the top of his ear and it folds and then comes back down and we've got that dark shadow coming down from the top and then we've got another one next to it just inside leaving a bit of a highlight but darker at the top and the same right up underneath the creased overhang and I'm just gently building the tone up got a little highlight on the edge of the ear and that comes up and then that's got to be darker all the way around that edge then that curves down to the earlobe top of the earlobe's got some shadow and we've got a little bit on the bottom now it is a bit lighter and just softening the tone of those highlighted areas and again you can see we've got the three-dimensional shape that we need on that ear now I'm just gently darkening the edge of KSI's jawline all the way around and that's going to be where the whiskers we're going to put on in a little bit but now coming back with the 2b pencil we've got this chain we've got the shadow and i'm softly using the point just keep twisting it so they've got the sharp point but I'm not pressing on too hard so I've got a diffused line that comes all the way down but then where it comes here we've got a diffused shadow because it's coming over the top of his t-shirt and the shadow is cast down onto his neck from the actual chain now again just coming back in with the putty rubber and I'm pulling the pencil off inside the two lines and that gives us the highlight on the chain again same on this side need to bring the crisp line up edge of the chain curve this around and then we've got the same here just a little diffused shadow line where it goes up and over the top of his t-shirt Again, I'm using the dirty putty rubber because it just, just seems to be working for what I need. Just pulling the pencil out. Now as I get to here, I'm just dabbing because that's in shadow. just crisping the edge 
of that chain up. Oh there, that's looking absolutely lovely. Now back in with the 4B, just because it's soft. And we're now going to put his whiskers in. All around the side of his face. And again, I'm just drawing them as if they're growing out of the side of his face. And that's how you make it look real. And so we've got this nice fuzzy line next to his cheek as it comes down. And then we've got, like by his ear here, we've got some nice little squiggles. We've got squiggles where it's coming down his chin. We've got some more hairs inside his actual chin line. But as the pencil gets blunter, again I'm turning it on its side a little bit so as I've got a sharper line, we're getting just nice fuzzy lines. If you just keep turning the pencil you get another sharper bit because where it flattens it creates a sharp edge just next to it. And there already you can see that's really helping us give the form to the side of KSI's face. Then we come underneath his chin and then up the side we've got much darker so Again, I'm just drawing the hairs as if they're growing out the side of his face. And then it gets very thin where it comes up the side by his ear. Now, this is where we need to be careful. So you can see above where the top of the neckline is, we've got, yeah, you, you've got to keep looking at your reference, otherwise you'll put hairs where they aren't. So, you can kind of see where you've got those little bits of hair growing on his chin. And then these bits on the front. Again, I'm not doing these as dark as the edges. Still twisting the pencil to give me that slightly sharper edge. Again, if you use something like a 6B or an 8B, your sharpened end of your pencil will blunt even quicker. Well, that's where they are good for just filling in large areas very quickly. So here we've got a shape coming up. That comes up a little bit. And then coming down creating this little patch here, a little few hairs coming around the corner. Then we've got like a row within a row. You've got like a little gap there. So again, just like the hairs up here, just kind of pointily adding dots. Now you can see we've got really nice shape and form now created by the hairs on his chin and his side of his face. 
That really is the last time I can show up in that. But now, using the 4B pencil, the flat side, I'm going to darken down the tone on the side of his face. Because we really need to bring the dark shadow side down. I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand just so as I can pivot easy without affecting the paper. Again, I'm not going right to the edge. There's a kind of slight reflected highlight so it needs to be darker just inside the line of his face and the bandana and the side of his face and his ear and that dark goes up to the corner of that eye socket above his right eyelid and again you can see you're just adding little bits of tone very carefully because it's easier to add tone and take it off so coming up the under the bottom right of his right eye And we've got here, we've got one, two, three, four little crease lines. You've got one, two, three, and then the fourth. Again, now just using the very side of the pencil to increase this tone all the way down the right side of his face You can see where the top of this reflected shadow is, kind of level with the bottom of his lip. So you can bring that shadow up right the way to the edge, soften it just gently as it comes around the corner of his cheek. And we've got a slightly darker line inside. I'm just letting the pencil do the work. Again, I can just darken that ear down at the top. Doesn't matter that I'm going over the edge of the line between the side of the cheek and his ear, because it's all in shadow and the tone is working for you. Then coming down to the chin. And we've got that highlight by the side of his mouth. And then we've got a shadow coming underneath. Just curve it around very carefully. Bringing the edge of his chin. Then in this little patch at the bottom. Now, even in this reflected highlight, we can just tone that down. Just add on, and then there's a little bit of reflected underneath as well. So we can come right down onto the neck and fill this tone
right the way on the right hand side and there that's looking absolutely fantastic I am so enjoying this again just darkening that tone down a little bit now it's just a case of adding tone until you're happy and, and, and tweaking the details and I'll just keep talking you through it so we got underneath the chin you've got this diagonal line of the shadow coming across but it's soft so we've got to diffuse it slightly now you can use a blending stump or a cotton board your finger kitchen towel anything like that so here now I can see we just need to add some more hairs into that little reflected highlight part coming up the side of his face creasing the dark in his ear and then right in the corner of the t-shirt where the chain is in the shadow and we've got this much darker tone right at the back and then just lighten up as you come forwards and I know that everyone's thinking you know oh this is photographic but I've done this in a few hours you know, the guys and girls who do hyper real illustrations spend days and days and days and weeks and weeks but I'm showing you the basic building block techniques that you've got to use to create this kind of a portrait so again just building this tone up we've got a little curve coming around more shadow coming down the side of the neck that's looking truly lovely so here we've got the shadow this is the sinew coming down the side of his neck and you've got the reflected highlight here so you leave that and that's off the t-shirt then you've got a bit of shadow at the bottom And the same there now the left hand side of his neck you can darken that down this is quite quick this is just using the pencil to fill in a large area because you're focusing up here this area just needs to look the part again you can spend a long time doing this but you haven't got to So I'm building this tone down. Again, I've not used a paintbrush or, or anything to smudge any of this in. This is just using the pencil to build up the tone. And it just looks exactly as we want it. Coming down, we've got this V. I'm just adding a little bit more tone as it comes down to the center of his neck kind of under bit of where his Adam's apple is and then we've got this V coming down from this side again just it's more shadowed so we're just building the tone up And that kind of comes up and joins on there. And again, we can now just build up more 
the shadow tones around the face. And you can hear how quickly I'm, I'm sketching and you can see how quickly I'm actually sketching these around. In the corner of his eye, down the side of his nose. corner of his right eye socket curving over and again we want that darker shadow coming up the side of his forehead underneath the bandana just building that up going through the eyebrow the top over the top of his crease in his eyelid So there we've got the shadows on the side of his face. That's looking really, really lovely. Now I'm hoping we're actually on the home stretch. So I'm still using the 4B pencil. I'm just looking to build up and increase the tone around the face so you can see here just down the side of his cheek between this edge and his lip we've got that slightly darker tone and then coming up the side here you can just see me because I'm going backwards and forwards gently I'm letting the weight of the pencil just pressing on a little bit And that's giving me the added little extra bit of tone that I need. And this is what you do. You just you just keep working until you go, yep, yeah, that's enough. Done now. Here we've got a nice shadow line just coming off the side of his eye. And then underneath that lower eyelid going up into the corner and then we've got this bruising creating this fantastic shape and shade <laughs> between the two eyebrows at the top of his nose and the two eye sockets So now, fill in that tone. You can see there's that diagonal highlight there. I'm just filling the tone in on the cheek, coming over. And you've got this highlighted area here. Coming down and then up, above. top of his mouth we're just filling in and gently causing the transitions now again you could actually do use a brush for this but I'm really liking this is a bit like Billy Billingham the when I did the portrait of Mark Billy Billingham of SAS who dares wins it's just great to use the pencil just keep using the pencil to create the tones that I want. So here we want a little bit of a lighter tone and the, the above part of his eyebrow, eyebrow, eyelid. And then this curves over and comes down. Again, the nose can just increase the shadow bring up that side point again in between the eyebrows we can just darken it on that side
and this is how you just carefully build everything up little by little so again like we did this cheek on this side we've got to do the same on this side bringing the shadow down from the corner of his eye across his cheek leaving this highlighted area but just following the shape and form of his face then going up underneath his eye of that upper eyelid and again coming down got this circular shape created by just tonal shadow on his chin that's looking really really lovely now I'm going to come in I'm going to carefully use the point of the 4B pencil we got this arc of the crease in the upper eyelid so I'm darkening that down but keeping it soft on the edge so that it's not too crisp and then right in the corner we got that curve coming around again you've got the kind of C shape there and just gently darkening that down and we got right in the corner where the tear duct is and then right under the eye we've got these little crease lines and then slight darker shadow right at the edge now that's looking absolutely lovely again on the right eye we're going to do the same we've got the crease line coming right the way over and that comes down into the shadow part Again, I'm just increasing. I've just done that a little bit too much. So I can pull that off very slightly. And soften that tone. But we need to bring the dark line down there. right into the corner of his eye got a nice deep dark shade and then we've got this crease line curves over comes right the way over the top over above the second one underneath I'm just darkening some of the eyebrows on this side just because they're in shadow and then we come in with a putty rubber and you pull out those highlights underneath the crease and above the top of the eyebrow in between those two creases and then above the crease line and then just carefully lighten the crease above the crease line as it comes down and the same above the upper eyelid then the highlight on this side very strong in the corner lighten the eyeball just dapple a little bit and there you can see the eye is really looking lovely again that highlight on the side of the cheek there that then goes up you 
even underneath the nostril. If we do the same on the left eye, right in the corner, you've got to highlight, highlight those creases. Where they come out underneath. Highlight on the lower eyeballs. And then right across the top. And then where the crease is, highlight under and above. And then in that area above, we can just dapple, bring about the highlights that we need. Again, same on the top of his cheek this part by the side of his eye, up the side of his head. And that is looking really lovely. Again, now down by the side of his mouth, got a little bit of highlight. Again, this is the joy of a putty rubber. You can just dab it on the end of your chin and it works for you just down underneath on the neck then the side of the mouth here we've got that stronger highlight and the same on the right side of his mouth I am really happy with this. I'm just going to come in with the 2B pencil. Ah, just jabbed myself. Just I literally just stuck the end of that in my hand. That hurt. I'm just increasing the tone slightly underneath the nose. And around on his nose going up and these are just literally last little details I'm now I'm going to use the clean putty rubber because it'll pull the pencil off and not leave any residue from previous drawings Right in the corner of the eye. That's really, really lovely. Back with the 2B pencil. Just adding some tone on this nostril where it curves under because it's just a little bit too bright. Again, these are just little tweaks as I'm looking that I just want to make before I call it a day. last little bits so here on the top of his forehead we've got another little shadow line that comes to the center and comes down and joins the nose but these are just minor minor tweaks there we've got the definition of the edge of the bandana that was missing just because we did a little bit of work with the putty rubber 
here on the edge of his eye. So again, there now, just because that needs lightening up a little bit. Just come back in with the putty rubber. But that, I am very happy with. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been an absolute joy and pleasure to do. We've drawn KSI. And again, it's just using the simple techniques to build up everything that you need. So here, yeah, I'm now going to just put on KSI. And on this side, Billy 2020. Anyway, I hope you've had fun. I've had an absolute blast. Do like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next drawing video. Take care. Ta-da.